What's going on everyone? I hope you guys are having a blessed or had a blessed day today. Um, I just want to bring up a topic that I've kind of watched and observed and yeah, I get it. But I think it's very important that we can understand a distinction um, so that there's no confusion, you know. Um, when it comes to the Word of God, either what God said is true is exactly that or man is adding stuff to it to change the dynamics of what God has already established, okay? Before we get into this, let's get into the gospel. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4, and that's that Jesus Christ died for our sins, was buried, and on the third day rose from the dead for justification. Jesus always existed. He is the second person of the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Jesus left heaven, was born of a virgin, lived a perfect life, never sinned, and shared his precious blood on the cross of Calvary for the forgiveness of all our sins, past, present, and future, and to reconcile us back to God and to also give us eternal life. Okay? So, what God commands is that we believe this testimony concerning His Son, Jesus Christ. Put our faith in the Lord. Okay? Put your faith in what Christ has accomplished for you on the cross. When He said it is finished, He means to tell us that, and that means the job is done. Mission complete. Okay? What mission was that? To come to save the lost. He already accomplished that on the cross. And to pay for sins of the whole world, he already accomplished that on the cross. You know, some people will say, um, well, well, it is finished really doesn't mean that it just means the end of Christ's ministry. May I bring to remind uh, remembrance for you that the only way Christ's ministry ends on earth if is when Everyone that needs to be saved has been saved, and the judgment is done. What, what do I mean by that? Remember, while Jesus went back, if his ministry was done, then why did he appear to Saul on his way to Damascus? Why? Why, why is the gospel still being preached? If his, because the gospel is the ministry of Christ, so it's not done, okay? <laughs> It's not done. What's accomplished is what he came to do for us, which is to save and to purchase us. Okay? That's what he's done. Okay? As far as his ministry on earth is not complete. Why? He still has to come back and reign a thousand years. Okay? On the earth. Okay? With a rod of iron. He still have to judge. Okay? So, it's not done. There's a lot more to Christ than people even understand where they just vaguely make some little snarky remarks that makes absolutely no sense because many people don't want to read scriptures and actually understand who the person of Jesus is. You know, if all you're doing is just reading and just, you know, or listening to people and regurgitating this, what people are saying and you're not actually taking the time to get to know him. Remember what Jesus said, right? He says to what? To learn of me. Why would he tell you to learn of him? Because when you learn of him, you learn his character. You, you learn what his mission was, what he's done. There's so much you can learn about Jesus Christ. And that gives you perspective a lot in scripture concerning what he's teaching, you know, and what his disciples are teaching also, because they are learning it from him, right? Now, talk about this whole idea of practical or progressive sanctification. First, let's, let's, Let's start with definition, because remember what I told you guys before. People like to just make up words in the church, and they just run with it. And then everyone else just start repeating the same thing, because it sounds, you know, you know, practical in a human sense. But we have to ask the real question here. Does this even make any spiritual sense? You have to ask those questions, okay? Because we have brain. We're not just, you know, you know under this hive mind, you know? Where everyone just just follow the crowd. No, we're not going to follow the crowd. We're going to ask the questions and say, hey, this doesn't sound right because I don't think that's what this is, means. First things first, we know that sanctification is called what? Holy. That's exactly the same thing. Holy. To be sanctified is means holy. Remember, when, <laughs> when God appeared to Moses, right? The ground was made holy. It means the ground was sanctified. That's why he told him, take your sandals off. Because you were standing on holy ground, which is a sanctified ground. When God appeared to, which is, by the way, when I'm referring to God, I'm referring to God the Son here, okay? Um, 
appeared to Joshua before the day of battle, okay, where Joshua was in, Joshua was asking him, are you for me or for my enemies, okay? Remember that in, in the book of Joshua? Well, he told Joshua also to take his sandals off because the place he's standing is holy because he is the holy one, okay? So therefore, wherever he comes is already made holy. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind, okay? Wherever he already comes, his standing is already made holy. Now, fast forward to the New Testament. If the moment you believe the gospel, Jesus said, I and my Father will come and make our abode in you. Okay? The Holy Spirit will also come and make his abode in you. So you have the fullness of the Godhead dwelling in you. Even Peter said that you are the tabernacle of God. So if you're the tabernacle of God, what have you been made inwardly? Holy. You already been made holy. Okay? Because in order for God to dwell in you, you must be made holy. And only him can make you holy. Based on what? Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and what he has accomplished on the cross. Okay? Keep that in mind. Now, let's talk about Paul in Romans 8. He says, Romans 8, 1, There is now therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walks not after the flesh. Keyword, after the flesh. Okay? So if you're not after the flesh, there's no condemnation. And then he reads further down, he said, but ye are not of the flesh. So the flesh is unbelievers, okay? So, you're not after the flesh, okay? Because you are of the spirit. While you still have this flesh, you are of the spirit, okay? That is your identity. The key word is, what is your present identity that is sanctified, righteous, glorified, okay? You made holy already, okay? We find that in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses, I believe is 11, where Paul was writing when he said, But you were washed. You were, you were, uh, what's it? You were washed. You were glorified. You were sanctified by the Spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, so the key here is this is all past tense. This is already was done. So, for a born again believer, the moment you have believed, you are made holy right away. You were sanctified, past tense, done deal. Okay? And if it's a done deal, what then is scripture teaching? When he said to live out your sanctification, okay? What is this? He said live out what's already completed, what's already been done. It's already done, like finicio, okay? Finished. What's already is being accomplished in you. You have the fullness of the Godhead already in you. What he's saying to live out your sanctification so that the holiness is to put it into practice. Well, the only way you can put that into practice is by looking at Jesus Christ. When you look at your flesh, it's impossible because the flesh will cause you to boast. When you feel like you're doing something because you were doing it. Key example here. Remember this story. When Jesus was walking on the water, Peter saw Jesus. And then obviously they thought it was a ghost at first. And then they were all scared. And Jesus called and said, it's I. Okay, it is him. And then Peter said, well, if he's you, then tell me to come. Listen, j j just pay attention to this. And then when Jesus told him to come, Peter got off the boat, not out of his own self-volition. Peter doesn't have any superpowers to walk on water. And he was walking on water. Because his eyes was on Christ, the one who has the power to make you walk on water. The moment Peter took his eyes off of Jesus, he begins to sink again back to your flesh. See, this is the problem that we have, you know. People say progressively you've been sanctified or you, or you have a practical sanctification. There's no such thing. It just doesn't exist. The reason why it doesn't exist is either... A, what are you sanctifying? Are you sanctifying your spirit or all your flesh? And if you're saying that you're sanctifying the spirit, well, the spirit is already sanctified, and he's the one that sanctifies it, not you. And if you say, well, it, well it's the flesh, well, how can you sanctify the flesh? The, 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 the flesh is dead. The Bible tells you there is no good thing that dwells in the flesh. So you are on a lose-lose situation right then and there. What then? 
We don't recognize the flesh at all. We don't reckon our flesh. Instead, what do we do? We look at Christ. So he is the one who helps us walk out the sanctification that's already in us, what's already accomplished. That's why he says to enter his rest. People think when he says to enter rest, you, you go in and then you just go to sleep. That's not what that looks like. You enter and rest in a place of no distraction, which is him. You are now looking at him and looking at him as he's guiding you through life journey. Okay? You find out that he's the one removing those obstacles that you have, those sinful um, you know, uh, uh, strongholds that are preventing you to move forward in freedom that you already have. Okay? The enemy have you, you know thinking you're still in bondage, but you're already free. He's one that's going to show you that you are really free because he set you free because your eyes is on him. But what progressive sanctification does is it teaches people to look at their flesh and to count what's been done as if you are the one that have the power to do those things. You see, there is boasting. This is why those who Teach progressive sanctification can say, well, look, you can't say, well, I can't, I can't, I can't trust in my flesh, but I'm being progressive sanctified. It doesn't make any sense at all. You know, that's a double talk. You know, just because a pastor that you love said this or because someone repeated that, that doesn't make it true, though. We have to see what is exactly accomplished. Either Jesus paid it all and accomplished everything or he didn't. In Colossians, it tells you. Ye are made complete in him. Ye are wrought with Christ in God. I mean, if you are made complete in him, what is complete? It's done. It's a done deal. So if you make complete, then what are you sanctifying then? You can't sanctify anything that's already been sanctified. You see, I just want people to really be like, just instead of getting to this debate going back and forth, just... Please see scripture for what it is. I mean, I understand the whole idea. People think when you talk about, I don't agree with this whole no notion of practical or progressive sanctification, you know, that, that that means you harbor sin. That's not true. I'm just looking at Christ because Christ is the one that sanctified me. So therefore, why should I be looking at my flesh? Why, what, why should I tell myself, I am being changed? No, I am looking at Christ and I am being conformed to his image. As I learn from him and follow and watch him. That's what I'm doing. That's not being progressive sanctified. That's already done deal. You already sanctify. So what's inside is just you manifesting that outside. But it's not you that does it. It is him. You can read it in Philippians, right? How people always say this. Walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. But they don't remember. I believe it's in verse 14. Where he said, but it's, for it is he. It's God is one that actually causes you to do that. He's one that does that. This goes along with Ephesians 2 8, 10 that people always try to argue about. Guys, scripture, when you start placing the scripture and seeing the same question, but it's been answered differently here, 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 but it's the same answer. It might not be verbatim, but it's the same answer. We all have a thought process to really process things, you know. Uh, some people are a little slower than others, okay? Um, but we eventually do get it. And we get it when we are focusing on him, not on ourselves, okay? The whole idea, people are just always trying to find something to fight about, you know? Just because someone made a comment, you don't have to always respond to that, you know? If you don't agree, that's okay. You can just say what you want to say. But remember, it doesn't make it true. What makes it true is what scripture states that is already true in you. Ye are made complete. So that means you're already sanctified. So if you can find a scripture that say you are progressively being made sanctified or practically being made sanctified, I mean, that's, that's, it doesn't make any, any sense. It's like double talk. We can't do that, people. We, we, we really cannot. I just thought about, you know what? It's, there's more far, far more issues that we have than this, you know, really. I just think people will just wake up and stop with this arguing over something that you just don't understand. That's okay. <clears throat> I didn't understand it either, you know, at first, you know, until I understood, you know, um, the gospel. And the gospel is what really just opens your eyes to a lot of stuff, you know. That's why I would say place everything against the gospel and against what's completed. And if it goes against what's complete, then that's not it. You know, it's that simple. You see, coming from uh, legalism, lordship and Calvinism, or oh, I was all of that. 
okay? I was ex-Catholic also, you know? I grew up Catholic, as a matter of fact, you know? So, coming from all of that, that is exactly the same thing they teach. Practical, progressive sanctification. They teach the exact same thing, believe it or not. While they don't believe in the gospel, they believe in your your actions. You have to do something concerning your... You have to do this. It's not you that do it, though. But it's God. And that cannot happen when you're not focusing on Him. If you're looking at your flesh, you ain't going to accomplish nothing. You know, I was listening to David Benjamin's um, um, video on this progressive sanctification in a notion, you know. And one thing that he said that he caught my, my attention very well is... Peter, Peter was rebuked by Paul 10 years after he's been already been preaching because he was in fear of the Jews, right? Versus, I mean, you know the situation where Paul called him out. If he was being progressively sanctified, then why would he cower back down in the flesh? But it's not. That's not what that is about. Instead, Paul called him out, Okay. Does that mean that, man, I got to start from square one now because, man, I messed up again? It, well, obviously, that's what Peter has always had inside of him, you know, because if he wasn't, he wouldn't be, you know, afraid of the Jews, you know, what they would think or say, you know. Instead, he would always stand firm. But it's always what he had inside until someone called him out on that and put a, a check on that, you know. That happens, guys, you know. Just understand that ye are made complete in him. Okay? Nothing needs to be done. What needs to happen though is concerning our own behavior, the Bible tells us in Romans 12 that we ought to do what? <laughs> we have to renew our mind, right? We don't renew our mind, wake up and say, well, I renew my mind. No, you renew your mind by the word of God, you know? That's what's true. When you're reading about the word of God and learn about him, that's what's going to help you renew your mind, you know? That's all it is. But it's him. It is his word, though, that does it, right? It is his word that does it, not you. You're not like, none of us has superpowers, you know, that we can just flip a switch or do something, you know, in our own strength. None of us can do that because our flesh is weak already. And every time you attempt to do something, trying to prove to yourself that I'm capable of doing this in my flesh, Guess what it sends you? It sends you back down the Lord, I mean, not Lord, the, the law, you know, path. And then you have something to feel like you have to meet. You have to, this rule I have to keep, or I have to do this or else God will be mad at me. I mean, this whole mindset is just ridiculous, guys, you know. Remember this, ye are seated in the heavenlies already with him. Paul wrote this. If you are sitting in the heavenlies with him, what are you progressively being sanctified for? Again, I'm, I'm confused. Because last time I checked, for you to be in heaven with God, you must be perfect, for he is perfect. So if you already be made perfect, in order for you to sit there, what are you trying to perfect? Your flesh? Because you can perfect the spirit, because he is God. Do, do, do you see? You have to ask the question, you know, this is why we are told to reckon our flesh dead. There is no good thing that dwelling in the flesh. Because with flesh comes boasting. And you can we know you can't boast before God. So so then what? What are you being practically sanctified for? No. All you're doing is living out your Christian life, what is already accomplished in you, what you already have, you're just living it out expressively. It's just, it's just like people say, you know, what a baptism, right? We know it's not a requirement for salvation, but people want to be baptized. It is an inward reality of what's already outside. I'm, I'm sorry, it's the outward reality of already what's inside, okay? That's what it is. You are just being baptized because you already believed, okay? Not for the sake of salvation, but because that's what you want to do, because you want to express your death, your burial, and your resurrection. That's all it is, you know? It's just an outward reality of what's already inside. Okay? Same thing with sanctification. We walk out our sanctification because it's something that's already inside. It's already complete. We're not put into practice by keeping our eyes on Jesus so he can guide us through that path. Just like 
when Peter kept his eyes on Jesus, Jesus was leading him and he was walking on water coming towards Jesus. But the moment he took his eyes off of Jesus, he sunk. The flesh took over. You see, that's our problem. Don't get to the point where your head gets too big, where you feel like I have arrived, you know, or I know it all. Now, we are still learning, you know. None of us know Jack, you know. Or what we can do is what we are learning, we can share that so other people can understand it, you know. Actually using logic, common sense, you know, it has to be applied, you know. Anyway, I hope this message suits a lot of you and finds you at peace. May the, like Paul was said, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. I love you guys. You guys take care, okay? Peace.